Hello, you join me on a very dreek mid-May afternoon in the Snowdonia National Park. We are here at Penny Pass where there is a unique collection of uh, hardened field defences from the early Second World War. Penny Pass is a, um, a junction of three main roads. It's a mountain pass. Uh, the road behind me goes down to Clanberris and passes by Mount Snowdon, which is behind me but shrouded in fog. Um, now over in this direction we have the road to Bethesda and in the distance over there we have the road to Capel Curig. The pillboxes have been sighted um, to provide mutual support for each other, so they're all, they all sit within a few hundred metres of each other. Uh, they're supported by um, field defences dug in as well as some spigot mortar positions covering the roads. And it's really a great collection to give the context of these hardened field defences and, and they remain relatively untouched uh, when, they were, when they were constructed um, in and around 1940-41. We're going to take a look at some of these pillboxes and some of these defences today and um, have a look at some of the some of the unique features that they provide. Uh, they, don't, they don't appear to be constructed to standard um, Department of Fortification and Works plans. Um, however, they are um, they do offer the same uh, the same features that uh, that most of those later designs would have as well. Uh, and just if anyone's interested, it seems Pay and display parking seems to get a bit ridiculous these days, but it is pay and display parking even on a layby at the side of the road. Um, and I don't know whether you can just see it, but there's a parking warden now ticketing people. So if you do visit these pillboxes, just st st stick a couple of quid in um, the car because that that seems that seems a little bit ridiculous to me. So anyway, uh, less of that, and let's go on and have a look at what Penny Pass has to offer. Looking more closely at the outside of one of these pillboxes, this is actually the highest pillbox uh, with the best commanding views over the junction. So there are a few features which um, some of you may not have seen before, um, around certainly not around the south of England. So first of all, we have uh, these pipes. So there's one of these pipes on each corner surrounding the pillbox, and they they could they could serve a number of purposes. They could be for um, ejecting used shells um, after after some sustained fire. Um, probably not so likely with small arms fire um, from Bren guns, uh, which would most likely have been been situated inside and used here. Um, they may have been for drainage. However, they sit too far up the wall for that to be a reality. Uh, they may be for dropping grenades on um, on invaders that are that are very close to this pillbox. Uh, you know, for example, if I was um, if I was if I was down here, the machine guns from the loopholes wouldn't be able to see me. But you may think um, it's possible to 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 drop grenades or other weapons down on the invaders. But actually, what's more likely? is that these were uh, ventilation holes so there are some early designs and patterns of uh, pillboxes which have vents um, around the pillbox so f yeah, firing a sustained rate of fire from automatic weapons is going to generate um, potentially a lot of uh, smoke and there was a 
Um, there was also a worry that noxious gases could, could build up inside the pillboxes. So we have vents on either corner and we have the loopholes themselves. Not so much precast as we often find in uh, other more standard pillboxes um, that followed a particular uh, particular wall thickness and a particular design. Uh, so these would have been, been cast and they are quite crudely cast in situ. Um, we also have some sleepers providing some additional support and strength to the roof slab which would be cast concrete and indeed we can see um, some of the cast concrete and really quite chunky infill and aggregate of that um, and probably most notably is the is the natural stone so looking around us we can see stones and rocks in the background we can we can see that that's most likely where these were quarried for, quarried from um, for the construction here so um, yeah we have lots of lots of natural stone on the outside uh, and we also have on top we have the earthen roof covering which not only provided a little bit more camouflage but it would also have added a little bit extra um, protection from shells should they hit the roof so yeah that's the outside of uh, the pillbox and I should probably mention the number of loopholes so on this side we have three loopholes and this is the the primary fighting side of the pillbox so the direction uh, that this pillbox is orientated is round is this direction yeah, that's Mount Snowden up in the distance and it would be along this pass, this road, that, that pill, this pillbox would have dominated. Um, any invader coming around there would really have had no choice um, but to try and push through that road, go up uh, over the mountain to your right or down into the deep valley um, to our left. So a very well-sided pillbox. Three loopholes on this side, uh, all three are open. Coming round to the front, uh, or sorry, the side of the pillbox, uh, there is a single loophole here. So on the inside, we'll, when we have a look, we'll see that there are actually two loopholes built into this pillbox. Only one has been left open. The other one has been blocked. Um, and there may be a reason for that, and we can, we can see inside. But if we have a look at where this loophole um, is orientated, if we swing round, and you'll see down there um, that we have a white van just in front of that, on this side of that road, is the second pillbox of these defences protecting the Bethesda approach to Penny Pass. So this loophole um, would protect the side. The pillbox down there has two loopholes facing this box, so that, that is in a better position to defend um, should this one come under attack. So we have one loophole on this side. Coming around the rear of the pillbox before we go inside then, um, it is reasonably steep on this side. Uh, coming around the rear, we also have a single loophole here. Um, so there's our single loophole, which appears to have been opened. There is a second one, which has been blocked in, and I think that probably has been blocked in um, uh, contemporary to the pillbox. It's been camouflaged on the outside, and we can see the cement when we go inside of how that has been blocked. So we have the three loopholes out the front, protecting the approach from Clamberis. Um, in that direction, we have one out in this direction, um, giving some protective fire to the pillbox down the hill. And we have the final loophole at the rear, um, which not only looks out onto the uh, land behind the pillbox, but just on the other side of these trees is our fourth pillbox. Um, so that loophole may have given a little bit of protection um, over the fourth pillbox in that direction there. So that's the outside. We will now crawl through a very tight entrance and have a look at the inside. As we come around to the entrance, there's quite a long curved entrance. So while there's no blast wall, as we would often find on other pillboxes, um, the curve of this entrance would, would certainly um, prevent or deter attackers from, from gaining quick access. So if we squeeze past the bags, and it is a very tight squeeze to get in here, you can see how long this corridor is for the entrance. And actually, interestingly, quite lovely, is some, um, some Bangor Blue Slate um, slabs, which are protecting the top 
and um, we'll cut our uh, sh concrete shuttering to the top of that entrance. And here we are inside the pillbox. So a number of things that I think you'll find interesting. The first of is there are two sets of bunk frames in here, which would have provided sleeping capacity for four people. Now, without knowing exactly what the specification and design of this pillbox was, I can't say for certain whether these are contemporary. However, there are plans, um, and if I find a suitable enough photograph, I will put it on the screen, but there are plans of pillboxes which um, were issued during the Second World War, which did involve, um, include bunk beds. Um, the, the, the plans I've seen in particular are for two bunk beds, or sorry, for bunk beds for two people. So it may be that given the remoteness of these pillboxes, given the importance of this valley and the approaches to it, that uh, bunk beds were provided so a, uh, a more permanent 24-hour guard at least could be provided here. So we have uh, the bunk beds. Uh, also in the corners we can see the ventilation um, on each corner. Um, one theory that, that goes away from the fact that these may be forgetting things out of the pillbox is if we have a look at this one, it is angled up um, actually making it easier for water um, or other debris to come down into the pillbox, as you can see. Uh, this one is quite interesting. This has a um, has had a, a um, sort of a tin can included with it, and if we look down at the bottom, there is some there's a slab of stone on the floor. Now, what that may have been is that may have been a modification for perhaps a stove. Um, so that this pipe in particular may have been used or modified um, to have a stove in here. Also reinforcing the theory that the, the bunk beds were intended to be here and the bunk beds would be used to, to sort of to have a standing watch here. Uh, looking out at some of the blocked loopholes then, so here is one that really seems like a, a pointless loophole, but it was facing the um, the wall of rocks uh, to the to the side to the right side of the pillbox. Uh, that one has been blocked up and isn't visible from the outside. We have the one which is immediately beside the door, which has also been cemented up and camouflaged from the outside. And there was the other blocked one in this corner. Um, it's, I've, I've no reason to suggest why these wouldn't have been blocked up um, at the time or perhaps um, slightly after construction. So they weren't, they weren't blocked up at the time of construction, um, but probably afterwards as opposed to being modern um, additions. We also have in the roof some other features which, which I'm, I'm, I'm slightly doubting would be contemporary um, just because of the inclusion of some clear plastic but with some wooden batten which is up around the corner of the pillbox and that holds this and um, this sort of acetate sheet uh, which is now quite brittle um, so that 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 may relate to a later use of the pillbox here's one of our other other ventilation holes um, the loopholes here have had originally some um, some sort of shutter most likely a, a weatherproofing shutter because um, there are some, some remains of how that would have been sealed in place. That may have been steel, um, as is often the case. Interestingly, it wasn't bolted into the, the side shuttering of the loophole. It was, it, it's, it's been, um, essentially sort of just been, been stuck in or wedged in with some, with some concrete. Um, so yes, yeah, so this is the inside, a rather spacious pillbox. There is, uh, unlike some others, there's no internal anti-ricochet wall. This is a single um, a single room fighting position. And we have our three, as I say, our three loopholes at the front that were covering the, um, the access from Clanberis. So we can have a look. Have a look outside as to what that, that view would have been. 
So let's move on from this one and have a look at some of the other features in this landscape. So I'm just doing a little bit of clambering oh, up the side of what feels like a mountain as uh, I'm here with John today and he's he's been in a little bit of a wreck and tipped me off that there's a spigot mortar position. So the pillbox we've just visited is down there and this spigot mortar is situated to the rear of that pillbox with stunning views down over the road and properly zeroed in and ranged. A spigot motor was a lightweight and cheap way to provide a certain amount of anti-armour or certainly anti-vehicle um, protection to the crews up here. Um, and with all of these defensive positions, it's likely the roads would have been blocked to slow and delay the enemy advance if they were coming in vehicles. Uh, but also, if they did manage to break through, then the spigot motors um, and perhaps other charges, mines laid, um, would have then debilitated some of the enemy's vehicles, making them the roadblock itself. And with the road blocked, you have sitting ducks, and with sitting ducks, that's how you win the firefight. So, ah, I can see it. I can see it just behind me over there. Very well camouflaged. Whoa, very slippy. Camouflaged and nestled into the landscape. Not much protection for the crew up here. However, yeah, that protection would have come in the form of the hardened field defences, the pillboxes, as well as other mobile uh, infantry that would likely have been up uh, manning this defensive positions. And wow, that is a bit of a beast. So let's go and have a closer look. And here we have the first of a number of spigot mortar positions around this valley. Uh, the spigot mortar, otherwise known as the Black Hour Bombard, was a 29mm um, anti-tank weapon. It was, it was relatively cheap and easy to produce. It had a maximum range of 450 yards, um, but was really sort of accurate up to about 150 yards. Um, and if we if we look down at the road below us actually 150 yards probably takes us to the near road down here with 450 taking us out to the junction and I imagine that all the spigot motor positions in this vicinity were centered around that junction where they could have uh, brought combined fire down onto but also they would have been able to fire on each of their individual approach roads. Uh, the motor position itself Unlike some of the positions in and around England that have ready-use lockers for ammunition around the outsides here, um, presumably for a reason of uh, resources, this hasn't been buried in the ground. This sits above ground. It has a dry stone wall around the edges of it. And in the middle is the characteristic concrete base of the spigot mortar itself. Uh, inside this would have been a reinforced steel frame, which is often visible at some coastal sites that have suffered from erosion. Um, that frame, plus the uh, steel plate on the top and the stainless steel spigot on which the mortar actually sat, uh, were provided um, to commands. It was then down to the engineers or the constructing units to create the formwork, in this case using some corrugated iron and fill with concrete. So a very substantial structure, very formidable, lightweight uh, anti-tank weapon um, made in great numbers to great scale to give us um, after the fall of um, 
France and having lost lots of our heavy weapons in Dunkirk the Blacker Bombard was the anti-tank weapon of choice for field positions um, around the UK in those early years of the war. So wonderful spigot motor position with some stunning views despite it being rather dreek today and if we if we look closely we can see that one of our pillboxes is just here they're very they're very well camouflaged it's actually hard to identify them and the other one is just here so we have two pillboxes um, that this spigot motor could probably cover uh, the third pillbox is just behind the little postal van here which we can't actually see from this position uh, and the fourth is out just over here on the other side of those trees so those are our four uh, pillbox or hardened field defence positions uh, including a number of spigot mortars of which I know at least one other is up on this other side of the hill and uh, we may not get a chance to visit that today so let's move on with this tour and we'll have a look at a number of the other pillboxes and features uh, that remain on this site <laughs> coming up to another great example. Uh, this one sits at the top of the Bedgelert Road uh, at Penny Pass. So huge similarities with uh, all four of these pillboxes here. We have the natural stone uh, outer face and interestingly I hadn't mentioned it in the previous one but there, the inner face um, of these boxes is also uh, made from that natural stone. We can see what's likely to be our vent on this corner as well as the two loopholes that we saw uh, from the first pillbox. And interestingly these two loopholes have uh, small tram rail sections um, as the lintels to the to the loopholes. Uh, so where does this sit in relation to the others? Well Directly in front of us here on the other side of that hill is the third pillbox. The fourth then is on the other side of those trees uh, which we can't see. And the box we have just come from is situated up here. So this, uh, this structure would have been able to provide that mutual support uh, to the one up the hill. Uh, similar again, we have the um, a curved along entrance uh, with slate slabs uh, covering the roof to the entrance. We have one loophole to the rear, which would have faced the the other two pillboxes, uh, and we have two loopholes on this side and the loophole here. Uh, this loophole on the right side would have protected the spigot motor position which is up the hill and the second loophole is uh, has been covered with a, uh, a cast iron grate so it's, it's likely that this is uh, this is contemporary and would have formed part of the um, the blocking up or at least giving some weather protection uh, to the loopholes in this box uh, all still uh, retain their original rooftop camouflage, um, all made of local stone, well camouflaged. Uh, this box was uh, built on top of uh, this small hillock, giving it just a little bit of extra height. Um, looking down with its main field of fire, looking down into that valley um, over the reservoir. So I think it's about time that we take a look inside.
So making our way down this very low and narrow passageway brings us inside and the first thing that you will notice is that there is a an anti-ricochet wall this has been made of red bricks um, and this is the only place that red bricks are found uh, on these sites is for the anti-ricochet walls uh, those keen observers among you may also have noticed that the interior of the pillbox is on two levels so there are two steps here and a third round the corner bringing the level for the main three loopholes um, up to a position where it would have been comfortable uh, to fire something like the Bren machine gun and we have three large loopholes there's no sign of any um, fixed mountings for weapons in these pillboxes. The Turnbull mount is often commonly seen on defensive pillboxes, but the main limitation of that is it really restricts firers to fixed lines of defence. Um, but in a landscape like this, uh, fixed lines of defence uh, would be too restrictive. Um, so no pillboxes. There are also no recesses for um, any machine gun feet um, or tripod legs in here which is which is which is often visible in um, in a lot of other pillboxes and here's another one of these um, cast iron shutters and if we look we can see that there are still some witness marks of where those shutters uh, may have been in place these don't look like a military item um, quite often they would have been um, if they were defensive shot uh, shutters for loopholes they would have been on hinges they could easily have been lifted up lifted down um, to protect both to get both, both against weather um, grenades from um, attackers but also from flamethrowers so it looks like uh, these were um, were not that and they are they're only visible on some of the more exposed um, sides so if we have a look here um, our first pillbox is up the hill over there these loopholes don't have any of that signs of protection these ones do it's possible that they were they were a post-war addition to try and add some weather weather protection to the pillbox um, or, or it may not be so if we have a look um, we have a look here there are none of those signs of those shutters being in place here we do have signs of some sort of shutter or protection being in place um, this one we do and the first one we looked at we do a theory of mine may be that um, because of the, the number of weapons or the number of troops available a number of the, the loopholes were blocked up um, and only, a num only some of them were, uh, were actually, actually active in the defence uh, the defence of the pillbox and we, st we still have our um, vents one at each corner um, for ventilation and as I say we've got the the nice big anti-ricochet wall. We have them, the natural stone uh, interiors, and these walls are, are approximately three feet thick. I think um, I need to start bringing a tape measure with me. Uh, but the, unu the unusual thing about it is the, um, the step to raise the position of the firers um, when they are inside. Uh, another point of note on the construction, because um, I'm, I'm always quite interested in the construction of these pillboxes is corrugated iron has been used on the ceiling um, as shuttering for the roof slab. So the roof slab has been, has been poured in situ using uh, corrugated iron shuttering. So there's the second of four pillboxes. We will make our way, continue to make our way across the site and see what else we can find. But first we have to get our way out of here. And here we are just approaching the third of our four pillboxes. Uh, unlike the others, which are uh, rectangular and could perhaps even be called section posts, um, this is more akin to a hexagonal pillbox. There are three loopholes, not specifically facing down any of the valleys, um, but they are providing uh, a little bit of mutual support 
for the final pillbox, which is just behind the hotel over there. Uh, this is the little bit of flat ground uh, leading down to Kapil Kurig. There's a, it's now, it's very, very, um, it's very flat, but it's also very waterlogged um, with the reservoir there. And this, this pillbox would have helped, um, help cover that open ground. On the outside, the features are very like the others that we have seen. We have the rough, um, very large aggregate um, roof, the natural stone um, outer walls, and we also have the loopholes with the uh, the steel rails. However, in this one, interestingly, have just noticed this is actually a steel stake, um, it, either a short stake. Um, which had been used for tying down some of the camouflage netting or barbed wire entanglements that may have been around these pillboxes. So they've used that angle iron steel stake on top of the loophole window. Uh, there's an awful stench of um, what I'm assuming is a dead sheep from inside, but we'll we'll have a little venture in and see if we can if we can stomach that. Um, and here's another one. Yes, there's the. Um, the notch at the top of that uh, at the top of that stake and there is a red brick anti-ricochet wall inside uh, much more important for pillboxes like this um, so that it doesn't turn into a bit of a cheese grater where rounds come in one side um, and, and almost pass straight out the other uh, there's no complicated entrance to this one another variation um, it it is just through the through the walls uh, and into the entrance of the pillbox. If we go a little bit higher, uh, so you'll see that I'm walking up on this earth bank. Um, so this earth bank would have protected it, uh, both from view, but also from fire from the rear. Those would have been the approaches from Clanberris and um, Bedgalert. And as I said, it's facing the Capel Curig approach road. And even from the air, even from here, that's a that's a remarkably well camouflaged uh, pillbox. All of these really fitting into the fitting into the landscape beautifully. So let's have a look inside. Yeah, descending into the pillbox, we can see the standard construction. And there is, there's a dead, dead ram in the corner, so I won't be spending too long. So we actually have, sorry, I missed this loophole, it was covered from the outside. So we actually have one, two, three, and round at the rear, four loopholes in this pillbox. Uh, this one we're at is looking at the hotel. The other three are covering that approach to Capel Curig um, and the, the open ground out to the front. And construction rise, um, all the same. Really, we have the natural stone um, on the inside. We have concrete, uh, large concrete loopholes, uh, much larger than um, some later pillboxes in and around England. And these look like they've been cast in situ yeah so if you see the way they the join the the wood that would have been used that's the foam work a helicopter going overhead so yeah the wooden wooden foam work would have been cut placed in position then the the concrete poured um, it looks like judging uh, from how the how the brick wall has been butted up against the uh, the natural stonework. The anti-ricochet wall was a later addition to this pillbox. Quite often they're built at the same time of construction, uh, but not not in this case. Uh, I correct myself. It it looks as if if we look at how the concrete is actually 
Yeah, the roof pour has been poured onto this brick wall. So I take that back. This anti-ricochet wall was indeed um, constructed uh, at the time of construction with the, uh, when the roof was poured. So that's the third, and this is, this is the last pillbox to be opened, the fourth. Uh, the fourth one has been secured and all locked up. But we will wand down and have a look at the fourth and final pillbox of the Penny Pass defences. And we've made it to the fourth of the remaining Penny Pass pillboxes. And no surprises, uh, it's very similar design to the others. Slight variation, this is almost pentagonal. We have a large base to the rear of the pillbox. The entrance is actually um, on the side. If you, if you consider that this would be the, the front uh, for the main fields of fire. So down in front of us is the road to Kapalkurig. And then if we turn around, we see the hotel and house here and the other three pillboxes are behind us. Uh, no longer covered really by this one because of the foliage, but it is possible to see uh, the third pillbox from here. And it's likely that the first one uh, may also have, have been able to provide some mutual support. Uh, Stein scenery, as we could expect from North Wales and the weather has improved uh, from this morning when we started. And still, it's still a busy road, uh, packed with vehicles. Um, now, if we come around to the side, let's say the side is, is really where the entrance is. Uh, we have this entrance here. Now, construction's slightly different. There are some red bricks uh, used um, for the entrance, um, but it does still appear to be uh, slate slabs covered with some uh, concrete. Uh, unfortunately, we can't get in the entrance of this one. It is sealed, um, as are some of the loopholes. Um, but I should be able to put the GoPro through to give us to give us an idea of what's inside. Uh, we have these steel coverings on some of the loopholes. Um, it's hard to tell at this stage whether they are contemporary um, and may have been put up at the time of uh, of construction or, or during use. Or to secure the pillbox um, whenever it wasn't been, uh, whenever it wasn't manned. Uh, but well camouflaged, and all four provide a certain amount of mutual protection to each other, including the field positions, um, such as the spigot mortar that we've seen, um, to really close off and defend this uh, this valley, which is what makes it what makes it so special. So, I'll get up to one of the loopholes and let's see if we can have a look inside through the wonders of modern technology. I'm able to use my phone to preview the GoPro footage as I insert the camera inside the pillbox. So, wow, first things are that this is indeed very different to the others. Having a look over to this side, we see there's an anti-ricochet wall, uh, or what appears to be, um, it may, however, only be a pillar and not so that appears to be a pillar but if we look on the far side of the wall we can see actually that it, it is an anti-ricochet anti wall but it has been demolished um, there's a considerable amount of brick shuttering here um, but that's no that's the, that that's an anti-ricochet wall so it looks there looks to have been a rather complicated arrangement um, of anti-ricochet wall here it looks almost as if it's um, so coming in the entrance on the far side of this this brick wall which is now painted green um, out um, around this side and then into the almost the chamber we're in now um, so actually a more complex rick anti-ricochet arrangement than some of the others uh, looking round then we can see the natural stone um, construction as the as the others had uh, there's a, a, a table which which is not likely to be to be original at all. 
uh, and then we have the entranceway on the far side. Now as for what this, this pipe is, it looks like that that is a, a, a boiler or stove which uh, which has been connected to, to one of the ventilation pipes. Uh, very hard uh, doing this remotely to see whether that's original or not. Um, it's, it's possible, it's possible, um, but at this stage I can't tell. And of course then there is the, there is the paintwork um, inside that pillbox which is, which is different to the others. So let's continue out and have a, have a bit of a close down. So this is probably a good time to finish. We've had a look at a spigot mortar position and four um, field defence positions or pillboxes um, at Penny Pass in Snowdonia. Uh, you almost uh, quite local construction designs, all well camouflaged into the landscape and all providing great covering fire over the approaches to this, the three main approaches to this pass. So this would have been um, an important area should um, should any inv invasion have happened um, either in central Wales and they were trying to push out towards um, Anglesey or the important part of Holyhead, even perhaps landing in Wales and trying to make their way up to Liverpool. Um, these are all, um, all plans that would have been, um, all eventualities that would have been considered. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. It has been rather wet, um, a little bit blustery, um, as you can probably now still hear. Um, yeah, that is the, the, the defensive positions of Penny Pass in Snowdonia. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.